this is a good idea. While yeah, it's under just construction. To, what's that? While it's under construction. Yeah, well, they did. It took a while before they finally did it because you can look. I've told them, like, look at that. Look how nasty it is. In there. Oh, yeah. And, like, would you guys please rinse them out? <laughs> yeah, you can come down here. You need help? All right, so we're looking at some LG chillers, heat pump chillers. Brett? Yes. How are you doing today? What's that? Oh, right, good. So good to see you. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, so LG heat pump chillers. So we'll talk about the application a little bit first, um, and then we'll talk a little bit about, you know, what these things are doing. But so we're at uh, Wardman building, is that correct? Yeah, the Wardman Towers. Wardman Towers, right? Yep. Just north right of- Right behind us. <laughs> right, right behind us, and we're in Washington, D.C. Is this officially Washington, D.C.? Yes. yes Just north is. of the Capitol building, right? Uh, well, the Ish. zoo's only about a half mile that way. The zoo's half mile that way, okay. So these, so the project scope is we've got the original Wardman Towers. Correct. And then next door, we're building out Towers A and B, new construction next door. Yes. And these chillers are serving the um, construction trailer, which is two floors in there? Yes, it's the first two floors of that level. Okay, so they converted two floors into the construction trailer area and the plant that used to serve those floors was in one of these buildings that got was torn down? Was in this space, yes. Yes, okay. so there was a service tunnel that ran underneath this corridor right. that fed the central plant to the existing building. Nice, so they needed some cooling. They cooling called, and heating. Called up Hobbs and Associates, they needed cooling and heating. That's an important point yes. to make. Yes, so yeah, so the things they liked was a yes, with one machine they got both their heating and cooling, they wanted a temporary solution, they had existing two pipe hydronic fan coils all throughout the space, so Perfect. it made a lot of sense in that aspect that we don't need simultaneous heating and cooling. We just need one or the other. Right, right. And then, um, and the fact that we were able to get them here within three weeks. That was wow. the other big driver. three weeks. Yes, they got them in three weeks. They got them installed in a week. And then within about a month, they were up and running. Nice. That's so. a good feature. I love, I love the aspect that these can heat when you need them and cool when you need them. Right, yes, and in yeah. this case, it was just a perfect fit. Right, and these have become a lot more popular. I don't remember early in my career selling a lot of air-cooled heat pump chillers, but it really is nice because you don't have to have the extra boiler when you have a changeover scenario. Yeah, and in this case, it was great because we didn't have gas here either. So there was no, like, either. yeah, there was no natural gas, so they wanted to go all electric, and right. so, you know, a condensing boiler was didn't really make a lot of sense because right. you know, it's outside, and so and there wasn't a whole lot of space in there to put a boiler. So yeah, so yeah, so it was like I said, it was a great fit. They had all the electrical they needed. Great. So yeah, yeah, and it's nice because if you need a, if you're doing a four point four pipe job, this is a two pipe where you're just changing it over. You're you're providing chill water one day, and then at some point it gets cold. You're providing hot water. But if you have a four pipe, you can have a chill, a dedicated chiller here, and a dedicated hot water machine here next to it. Right. And it's the same. It's the same machine for LG. It doesn't. There's not a different heat. It's all heat pump chillers, right? Yes. They're air cooled products. Yep. And then a lot of times we'll see is maybe even a third chiller that's their swing chiller, that would go. So in the summertime it goes to cooling. Wintertime it goes to heating. And then you got one that are dedicated to heating, one that are dedicated to cooling. Nice. So you you can do it. There's just lots of variations on how you can make this work. Yeah, and I love that they're covered up the condenser coils during constructions because there's a lot of dirt around here. Yes. So this is nice. Um, what ton, do you know what tonnage these are? Uh, both of them are 60 tons. 60 tons each. Yes. Okay. In three weeks, that's nice. Um, let's see, any other questions? Chris, anything come to mind? No, no, they, they work in tandem with each other. They actually have it as a lead lag setup as opposed to one big chiller. So they set up where this one will have a discharge of 42 degrees, that one's 44. And then after like a month or so, they'll switch it. That will be 42 and this will be 44. So they run it as kind of a lead lag standby kind of chiller operation. So the question was, are they isolated? Right, no, it, they're not isolated per se in the fact that there's no valving or anything of that nature that isolates it. 
but they will shut off and not operate. Well, I see they have isolation valves, but they look manual. Yes, yeah, yeah. Manual uh, isolation valves. And again, this was done as a temporary solution while construction is going on, so this wasn't really meant to be a long-term 30-year installation. They just needed to get some kind of cooling heating in the space during construction for three, four years. And so they kind of kept it bare bones to some degree and just wanted a simple solution that they can get in quick. Uh, not a lot of maintenance to it. Right. They love that. Um, and yeah, and I think in the three years we've had them, we haven't had any real alarms other than power failure. Yeah. And what I love about these chillers is it's hard to hear because there's a lot of stuff banging around, but they're extremely quiet. Just like VRF systems are, you can hardly tell they're running when you're standing next to them. And if I remember right, variable speed compressors, variable speed condenser fans. So it's all modulating. Yes. High efficiency. And, and tons of redundancy. So these are three modules, 20 tons each with two compressors, one heat exchanger. So if you did have a failure, you lock out that one module. So you still get 40% or 40 tons of cooling or heating nice. and, and things. Or if a compressor goes down, you still got one other backup compressor on that system. Yeah. So, you know, there's all kinds of redundancy built into them. And if you just needed 20 tons, you would have basically one module of this. Yes. And if you need 40, it's two and 60, it's three. I think this, is this the biggest? Yes. 60 yes. and then you get multiples of 60s. And I believe the job next door is gonna be 1200 tons. Did I read that right or? No, that was a different project. That yeah, was a different I was gonna project. Say, I think it's even more than 1,200. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the next door is gonna be a true VRF yes. job. Yeah, next yeah. door is all VRF with uh, DOAS for latent dehumidification. That's a good, that's a good idea. All right, thank you for the rundown. Okay. Appreciate it. <laughs> all right, let me grab a quick couple of B-rolls here. Thank you, thank you.